Welcome to Working in Teams, Articulating Feedback and Feed Forward, Tracking Success and Change. The objectives for Articulating Feedback and Feed Forward, Tracking Success and Change are to develop skills for clear communication and understanding of others, provide appropriate feedback to others, develop and deliver appropriate feed forward, Communicate in ways that help promote positive change for your team. The ability to communicate clearly with others is fundamental to providing appropriate feedback and feed forward. One of the distinguishing features of effective teams is the ability of their members to provide and accept feedback on their performance. High performance teams also exhibit the use of feed forward. Both of these methods for dealing with information will be introduced in this unit. You will be provided an opportunity to incorporate these methods into your personal ability to deal with performance information. Your ability to both provide feedback and feed forward information to others will aid in your personal development as a competent and capable member of a health IT team. Communicating for results includes the ability to actively listen to use assertive communication behaviors, and to use strong I statements. We will look at each of these areas in greater detail. Let's start with listening skills. A great leader is an active listener. Many people overlook the value that listening brings to interpersonal or group dynamics, but good leaders find this skill critical. A good listener hears and respects others' opinions and perspectives, and this respect engenders loyalty and trust. People who feel heard by their leaders are more likely to participate and contribute more fully to the team. Active listening is hard work. Interestingly, studies show that most people only remember about 25 to 50 percent of what they hear. So after a 10-minute speech, the typical listener would only remember two and a half to five minutes of what the speaker has said. Let's hope it's the important percentage or that speaker's message is lost. How can we improve those numbers? Part of it has to do with delivering our comments in a way that is engaging and interesting. The other part has to do with improving our listening skills, both as listeners and leaders. Part of being a good listener means not losing your team members' ideas or concerns. Take the time to focus on people as they speak. Listen carefully to their words, but also make eye contact and observe their body language. What are they really saying? As a team member, your ability to listen, to really listen, will help you to avoid conflict and misunderstandings, which is really necessary for effective teamwork. Good communicators know themselves and are able to unpack their emotions instead of exhibiting a knee-jerk reaction. By understanding yourself and listening well, you're better able to understand what others are saying and to provide them the kind of feedback and feed forward that is helpful to the team and to the individual. What are some strategies to help you focus and concentrate during a communication exchange? It is hard work to filter out the unnecessary, but that is required in order for you to hear the real message. Try to eliminate background distractions, turn off music, shut down the computer, put the cell phone on vibrate. You do not have to understand every word the speaker is saying to understand the gist of the content. Do not be afraid to ask the speaker to repeat. Alternatively, you can repeat the words silently to yourself as a way to plant the essence of the conversation in your mind. Sometimes taking notes will help. All in all, the goal is to improve your listening skills. Without good listening skills, can someone truly hear? Let's talk about how we can all improve our listening skills. We start with these five specific skills. Focusing on the speaker. Communicating your attention. Confirming and restating the message. Avoiding judgment. Reacting appropriately. On the subsequent slides, we will go into greater detail on each of these five points. Focus on the speaker. Pay careful attention to your speaker's words and nonverbal body language and confirm that you have received the message. How can you do that? Start by looking at the speaker directly and putting aside distracting thoughts. Listen and focus. Don't be spending your mental cycles thinking of a way to rebut. Easier said than done, but you must train yourself to not be distracted by environmental factors. 
listen not only to what is being said, but what is being revealed by the speaker's body language. Common courtesy dictates that side conversations are impolite. In regards to active listening, you cannot listen to two things once. Focus on the speaker. Communicate your attention. Show that you are listening through eye contact, nonverbal language, and gestures. Make sure that the other person is quite aware that you are clearly involved with what he is saying. Smile, nod, assume an open posture, meaning don't sit there with your arms crossed over your chest. Encourage the speaker to continue with words like yes or aha.、Uh -huh. Confirm and restate the message received. Clarify what you heard. Often, our own experiences and opinions can distort a message. We sometimes hear what we want or expect to hear, not the message that is actually being verbalized. To prevent this kind of confusion, review what you have heard, ask questions, and restate it in your own words to confirm that you both understand the message. What I'm hearing is, and sounds like you are saying, are great ways to reflect back. Ask questions to clarify certain points. What do you mean when you say, "Is this what you mean?" Summarize the speaker's comments periodically. Sometimes another person's experience can move us emotionally. Coming back to understanding yourself, getting a grip on your own feelings, sharing your reaction, and asking questions may help to enhance the communication. Avoid judgment. Active listening means receiving a message, not delivering an opinion. Judging only alienates the speaker and distorts the real message. Let the speaker finish. Do not interrupt with counter arguments. If you don't agree, respectfully offer your opinion and calmly discuss. React appropriately. Active listening should convey respect and appreciation for the valuable information that you have received. Responding negatively to the speaker's experience only creates friction instead of empathy. Assert your opinions respectfully and treat the other person as he or she would want to be treated. Active listening requires hard work. Often focused on our own thoughts and concerns, we can find it easy to zone out on other people's words. But with careful concentration and determination, you can retrain yourself to become an active listener. Think carefully about your listening process. Do you fidget or daydream while others are speaking? Remember that you want to understand the speaker's message and quiet your mind and body to better focus on the words expressed. Be curious and thoughtful, and restate your understanding of the message. Active listening can help you communicate more effectively, which can ultimately improve the outcomes of your team's efforts. It takes concentration and determination to be an active listener. Be deliberate with your listening and remind yourself constantly that your goal is to truly hear what the other person is saying. Start using active listening today to become a better communicator and improve the performance of your team. Assertive communication techniques help us deliver both positive and negative messages in a direct and respectful way. Assertive communication is never aggressive or hurtful; it respects both our opinions and the feelings of others. Using assertive communication techniques, we can provide constructive criticism and encourage honest feedback from others. It is often the first step to resolving conflict. Why use assertive communication? Sometimes, when we feel threatened, we become manipulative or aggressive. Unfortunately, these behaviors tend to alienate and anger our listeners. Employing assertive communication techniques helps us identify problematic behaviors and replace them with constructive ways to resolve issues. Rather than trying to control others' actions, changing our own responses can encourage an honest, helpful exchange among all parties. Assertive communication can help us in many ways. Some of the most salient advantages include positive thoughts about ourselves and our colleagues, fewer occurrences of offensive and distressing behavior, greater, more complex expression of our wide range of emotions and opinions. It increases our self-esteem. It helps us achieve our goals. 
it minimizes hurting and alienating other people, and it helps to reduce anxiety. Elements of assertive communication include eye contact, connects speaker and audience, shows engagement, open body language, each facing the other, uncrossed arms and legs, indicates receptivity, gestures that support receptive nonverbal language and demonstrate interest, voice pitched at a volume loud enough to hear but not at a threatening level, time receptive words and gestures to show interest and encourage openness. While these nonverbal elements can sometimes be more significant than the actual words, pay close attention to what your statements contain. Your content should provide constructive feedback and information, not judgment. Assertive communication provides a non-threatening way for you to express your emotions and opinions. One technique uses I statements. For example, I feel that your interruptions make it difficult for me to fully express my thought. I statements focus on your feelings, offer perspective, and demonstrate the cause and effect of behavior. It is best to stick with honestly stating how it affects you personally. Attributing it to others is not as effective. For instance, if you say, others find this disruptive, then the recipient may wonder who else feels this way and question why the others did not voice the concern directly. Stick with your personal perception. Avoid accusations or judgments. If I statements are open, honest, and non-threatening, they will strengthen the relationship by encouraging trust. Interwoven in here, of course, is that concept of self-awareness that we have discussed earlier. A person with heightened self-awareness will take this as constructive, understand that the goal is not to belittle someone, but to strengthen team communication. Strong I statements have three specific elements. They focus on a behavior, they reflect a feeling, and they identify the consequence of the behavior on you personally. As reflected on the slide, the behavior element in the sentence is your interruptions. The feeling mentioned in the sentence is I feel, and the tangible effect is that the behavior makes it difficult for me to fully express my thought. Practice this skill especially in regards to your own self-awareness and personal growth. Providing feedback is another skill that requires work and perfecting. Many of us have had experiences with feedback sessions that did not go as well as they could have, or that the real message of improvement and perfecting gets lost in emotional responses. This is why it is strongly suggested that formalized constructive feedback techniques be used instead of simply praise and criticism. Constructive feedback is based on what has been seen or observed. It is information specific and is focused on an issue. Constructive feedback can be positive or negative and directed toward improvement. There is a very important balance to be struck between constructive praise and an appearance of it is never good enough. For example, when providing positive, constructive feedback, point out the aspects that contributed to the cause, such as, your ability to relate to the CEO was excellent. These are skills that we need to develop further. What should be avoided is positive feedback that rings hollow, such as, I am so pleased that you increased the efficiency of medication delivery by 30%. I just wish we could have gotten to 50%. That is an example of false praise. With that said, we could turn that statement into constructive negative feedback, such as, Jennifer, your performance on the project was very good. We have seen an efficiency gain of 30% in medication delivery. As you know, however, our goal was 50%. While we have made progress, we still have a way to go. I want you to keep up the steady forward progress, and I would like to hear your strategy for further work toward the goal. How about providing effective feedback in the workplace or in regards to an entire team? Are the techniques different than in the one-on-one -on -one situation? Is an I statement still appropriate? To begin, while it is important that we understand feedback as an element of teamwork, it's also influenced by the culture of the workplace. Not understanding or appreciating the culture in which the team is operating can severely impact communication, not only within the team, but across interacting teams. How feedback is provided is extremely important. 
feedback that is provided in a suboptimal fashion may result in negative consequences, such as misunderstanding, poor morale, and confusion. At worst, it can cause resentment and distrust. Aside from the techniques provided earlier about the traits of a good communicator and the difference between constructive feedback and praise criticism, we also note three additional points on the slide. Feedback should be timely, focused on the issue at hand, and only on the issue at hand. The third point is that feedback is a two-way street. There should be an exchange between the sender and the receiver, recalling that the overall goal is improvement. A good feedback session moves both members forward. Using HIT team as an example, it's important to provide feedback during the course of the project, not after the project is complete or has moved on. A timely piece of feedback provided as the need arises at the moment of occurrence is much more powerful than waiting until the end. Feedback should be focused only on the issue at hand. Dredging up old issues is very inefficient and may actually serve to derail your efforts rather than propel them forward. If you are providing feedback to a team member, it may be beneficial for you to ask, how could I do this better from my angle? It is important when providing feedback to back compliments with specific examples and a reason. Be honest and specific. And as you provide compliments with a reason, make sure to also spell out any specific details of critical information or room for improvement to the individual that you are addressing. Also, provide some challenges for them as they will see it as an opportunity for improvement. In the HIT team scenario, it's important to leave time for feedback for team members to understand what went really well and what really didn't go well and why. In short, a team debriefing. This empowers a team and builds unity as everyone realizes it really is one for all and all for one. One tool that has been used to help individuals to value the importance of feedback is what is known as the Johari Window, so named for the first names of its two creators, Joseph Luft and Harold Ingham. This tool is helpful for discovering your own level of self-awareness and to assist with team cohesion and understanding. It is approached from appraisal of oneself and appraisal by others in the group. The window displays four quadrants and two dimensions. One dimension is what is known to self and known to others. The other dimension is what is not known to self and not known by others. By looking at the grid, note the upper right quadrant. It is labeled arena but it is also known as the free area. The goal of any team should be to develop and deepen this quadrant because this is the area where good communications and cooperation occur. As a good team begins to mature and become more open with each other, this quadrant expands, and that is a very positive thing. It means the team has normed and has moved into a comfortable and open working relationship. When a new member joins, the upper right quadrant is small because he has not reached that level where the team knows him and he knows the team. You can imagine that the other quadrants are areas where improvement can be sought. A blind spot in a team member is something that everyone else in the team knows about the person, but the person does not seem to know it. The goal in this block would be the use of techniques to help the person raise his self-awareness. The facade quad is also known as the hidden area, so people in this quad may be repressing true thoughts and beliefs or are intent on manipulating or influencing the team in a way that detracts. Moving a team member out of this quad involves encouraging disclosure or expression of feelings. How does that make you feel, Janice? I know that you have some valuable perspectives to share, John. Can you share some of those with us? And similar comments may help to move this team member into the open quad. Finally, the unknown area is one where neither the team nor the person is aware of what is troubling or interfering. Self-discovery and self-actualization techniques are called for here, but these areas of discussion go far beyond the scope of this discussion. The takeaway from this slide is that there are methods for putting yourself and your team on the grid with the quest of reaching the upper right and open quadrant. That is where high-performing teams live. Feed forward is a term that reflects change from a prospective angle rather than retrospective. In essence, feed forward was made famous by Dr. Marshall Goldsmith and is focused upon preventing problems before they arise. 
Feedback occurs after a behavior or an event has occurred, so the learning is to improve on the next attempt. This is very similar to retrospective quality improvement activities that we see every day. After several pedestrians are killed in a dangerous crosswalk, the Department of Transportation decides to install some sort of safety measure. Or after three neonates are fed the wrong breast milk, a hospital decides to invest in barcode labels. Feed-forward approaches are designed to assess the environment for the problems before they occur and then take actions to prevent them from occurring in the first place. The feed-forward approach is based on the principles from Goldsmith listed on the slide. For example, he asserts that changing the past is impossible, changing the future is not. Therefore, the future focus is a focus on behavioral change. He also believes that proving people to be wrong is less effective than helping them to be right in the first place. Individuals like to know that they have an ability to fix wrongs and to become better at what they do. Capitalize on this. Feed forward often brings out success in people because this type of help is coming from others who probably already have some degree of expertise in the task domain. Similar to feedback, the goal is to keep it objective, not personal. And because it is forward-facing, it can be less upsetting or incendiary to the recipient. It is often accepted as helpful hints for moving forward. Goldsmith suggests that in a feed-forward, it is easier to accept support from someone who presents as a fellow traveler or the helpful guy along the path than a bossy expert. Why not try feed-forward instead of feedback? Feedback has been the traditional manner of producing information for individuals as we attempt to correct negative situations and increase the effectiveness and efficiency of our operations. Even though it has been the tradition, it is time to try to take a step into the future and provide much more relevant information for individuals and produce a situation where they can see that you are helping them to move into the future, more as a coach or as a development aid, instead of someone who is always critiquing from a negative standpoint. So why not move forward in a much more fun direction, in an open way, as we progress into the future, instead of always looking backwards? If you have the opportunity, visit the Marshall Goldsmith Library, where you can find a few free exercises in feed-forward techniques that may help you to really understand this concept. This concludes Working in Teams, Articulating Feedback and Feed Forward, Tracking Success and Change. In summary, we have discussed techniques and strategies to help you develop skills for clear communication and offered a few tips for helping you to understand others and yourself better. We talked a lot about what feedback is, how to deliver it, and some tools and techniques for improving the process. We also broached the subject of Feed Forward, and talked about how we might want to make a more prospective approach to improving team performance. All in all, we hope that this unit has given you a deeper understanding of these aspects and how you can work to improve your own internal skills and to help your team move forward.